This video tutorial will uh, help solve free response question number five from the 2013 AP Chemistry exam. Let's read question number five. A sample of uh, ethene or ethylene gas is placed in a two liter container heated from 300 to 450 K and the uh, pressure of the sample goes up as shown in the graph. So as temperature increases, pressure also increases. Uh, describe two reasons why the pressure increases and uh, the description must be in terms of what occurs at the molecular level. This means they want a, a part, particle based explanation of what is occurring. So first I think is obvious. Uh, increased temperature means that particles are moving at, with more velocity so you have increase in the number of collisions of the gas particles with, wall of with the wall of the container. That's one answer. The second is that not only do you have more collisions, but you have higher energy or higher kinetic energy of collisions. So you can say the increase energy, kinetic energy in particular, of each collision. The second part of this question asks the following. Uh, ethene or ethylene reacts readily with hydrochlor hydrogen chloride gas to produce uh, monochloroethene or chloroethene as uh, represented in the following equation. When HCl is injected, the total pressure increases. That makes sense. We're just sticking more gas into the, uh, into the reaction vessel. So the pressure goes up at first. But then uh, as the reaction uh, proceeds at a certain temperature, this pressure begins to decrease. Why? So I think the answer should be fairly obvious. Uh, on the left as reactants, you have two moles of gas particles. And on the right, you only have one mole of gas particle. So uh, the explanation is twofold. First, gas is consumed as the reaction proceeds. And as gas is consumed, there will be fewer collisions with the walls of the container. And if there's fewer collisions with the walls of the container, the pressure goes down. The third part of the question uh, says this. It is proposed the formation of chloroethene proceeds in a two-step reaction mechanism. Those two steps are shown here. The first step is indicated as a rate determining step. Uh, that's the slow step. The fast step is never determining, uh, never determines the rate of a reaction. So for us to write the rate law, uh, which is what question C asks, write the rate law for the reaction, uh, we need to uh, have it depend only on the slow or rate determining step. So to write a rate law, you always write rate is equal to the rate constant times the uh, reacting reactant concentration in the slow or rate determining step. So it's going to depend on the concentration of ethylene gas and hydrogen chloride gas. Part D states uh, or asks you to identify an intermediate in the reaction mechanism above. An intermediate is something that's produced in the first step that is consumed or uh, a reactant in the second step. And there are actually two possible answers. You can see that the chloride ion is produced in the first step and is a reactant or consumed in the second step. But same with this ion right here, the C2H5 plus is produced in the first or and consumed in the second. So there's really two possible correct answers. It can be either the C2H5 plus ion or Cl minus. Actually, and they are both um, intermediates. Part E of the question asks you to draw a uh, energy curve that shows the energy change uh, across the progress of the reaction. And two things must be shown the two-step mechanism and the enthalpy change. Now we know we have a two-step mechanism because uh, we have an initial rate determining step and a second faster step. The enthalpy change is, a uh, hint is given to you in part B of the reaction when it was stated that the enthalpy of the reaction is negative 73 kilojoules per mole, roughly. If it's a negative delta H, that means that the reaction is exothermic. So that has to be indicated on this graph. So first of all, uh, let's start with the potential energy relatively high of the reactants, and we're going to have a two-step mechanism. So there's one step, there's your second step, and then the products are produced. Uh, the products are at a lower 
energy. So let's label this as products. These are reactants. And uh, the next question, part F, says on the diagram above, clearly indicate the activation energy. The activation energy would be this amount of energy right here. So clearly indicate that that's the activation energy, E sub A. That's the energy needed to get the reaction to proceed. And there are two steps. So two sort of energy barriers are indicated on the uh, reaction diagram. But the very first one is the activation energy to get the reaction proceeding. Now that is the uh, answer for question number five. Oh, hey, uh, one other note. Um, notice on this reaction that the initial energy barrier for the first reaction uh, shown here is higher. That means it will be slower. It is the rate determining step uh, for a two step reaction. So the activation energy, the first energy barrier is a little higher. So it's a little bit of a slower uh, reaction of the two sub reactions in the uh, two step mechanism.